Prepare to get nerdy, as today I'm going to walk you through the ins and outs of a data-driven software project. My friend Rami and I are working on a website that helps students to find the perfect university course for them. The user can enter their preferences into a quiz, and the app will provide ordered universities that are best for the user. And thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. To make this project possible, we were given a rich dataset of all universities in the UK. There was one problem though, the table names make no fucking sense. What's a quiz mode? What's an ass URL? <laughs> oh, but never mind. Somebody actually took the time to document this mess, so we're okay. My first task was to dump all the CSV data into a Postgres database. God help me. And after relearning the entirety of SQL, I was ready to write a TypeScript application to do this. Oh, it actually like, full on passes it for us, nice. We also need to convert that to a number. This is fucking dreadful. This data that is explicitly pushed to the array is not in the array. Oh wait, no, I've got to do index minus one, never mind. I'm indexing population record zero, so it's just giving the same result over and over. I've been debugging this for like 45 minutes. No errors. We did it. We did it. Before any of you complain, I know this code was really inefficient, but I just don't care enough because we're only gonna have to do this once. I then wrote the UI in React using my questionable design skills. And now it was time for the big part, ordering the course results. First, we had a bit of a dilemma, uh, because the quiz allows a user to select the maximum distance they want the course campus to be. This would mean that we could be checking the distance between a postcode and 970 possible campuses. And using the Google Matrix API would be very inefficient for this. So we came up with a wacky solution instead. We could use the Haversign distance algorithm to calculate the distance between two coordinates. We already have the coordinates for each campus, but as for the postcode, we can use an API such as postcodes.io to get the coordinates of that specific postcode. Now I'm not sure if we're allowed to use an API for a commercial use, so we'll have to look into that, but we'll use something similar. The downside to this is that it is based on geographical distance instead of road distance. In future, we might want to opt for something like path finding, which is based on some local map data. When the user completes the quiz, it will send an API request to the backend with the user's choices. As the user can provide multiple course choices, we will use this to filter the results, so irrelevant courses won't show up. Realistically, we will want to cache this data with Redis, as the data is static. Later, we'll also want to fetch courses that are similar to the user's choices, rather than exact matches. To show you why, this is how many different types of computer science courses there are, and the, sh and the user shouldn't have to select all of these. After this, the next task is to loop through the courses, and assign a score to each course. This score will be higher the more it matches the user's preferences. For example, if the user chose a year abroad option in the quiz, and the course offered a year abroad, a hard-coded amount will be added to the total score for that particular course. As you can see by the plan, this is going to be a nightmare to write, but it will be worth it, I think. Once all courses have been assigned a score, they can be ordered with the highest score first. Now, before discussing sending 33,000 courses over HTTP, I'd like to talk more about this video sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare has everything you need to go from passion to paycheck or seed your side hustle. Whether you want to build a career in freelancing, use AI tools to increase your productivity, or captivate your audience, the Skillshare community can help you get there. The classes are led by industry professionals who condense years of experience into short classes. One learning path I'm particularly interested in is the creative business path which will certainly help grow this project, teaching the necessary skills to grow a strong user base and stand out from competitors. I love that you can pick up any skill in a practical way and apply it to your personal and professional life. The videos from the community make the learning process fun and interactive instead of making it feel like a chore. After completing a class, you can also get certificates to show to future employers. The first 500 people who use my link will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. So if you're interested in picking up some extra skills, check out the link in the description below. And thank you again to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. If we are going to send all 33,000 courses to the front end, I calculated this and that's going to take about 20 megabytes of memory. We also wouldn't be able to store this in local storage as the limit for that is only 10 megabytes. One idea I had was to just limit the results to a smaller amount like 500, but obviously there's going to be less results for the user. However, this is an MVP and we will have to cut some corners, so that's a possibility. We could also cache the results associated with a specific IP and send the data in pages. Next, Rami and I made a start on the API. <laughs> I like, I like, come on. Stop importing shit, you don't need it. <laughs> oh, I actually got errors, let's go. I've never been so happy to see fucking errors. If you have to mess around with this file manually, something is right with your project. Might need to blow that out. 
if the screen recording works. Yeah, note to, note to me editing, do not keep this in the video. <laughs> Okay, that should work. <laughs> Rami had to teach me a bit of C sharp, but eventually we made some progress. Where'd you look at that? There are all the courses. That's all we have time for in this video, but I'll update you on the progress in the next one. And if you've learned something, be sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.